pastiche of our accent. It was so overdone, no one's going to believe that. Um, so we're not long <laughs> into a new year, and we should have a bit of a review of, of the last year. You know, I, I was on a skiing holiday in Austria in December. <laughs> What's so funny about skiing? I perfected a new ski manoeuvre, it's a German one. I call it the Michael Skull Smacker. But, <laughs> what? Anyway, um, and we look forward to the next year, you know, World Cup coming up. Is anyone foolish enough to support the English football team? Hey! Can they take a quarter better than Schumacher? That's what we're soon going to find out. What? Uh, okay, um, <coughs> where do we get to? <coughs> so that chap, Ariel Castro, was caught in America. Do you remember Ariel Castro kept women in a dungeon in his house? So boring. But um, I saw an interview with Castro's neighbours. That you know, they said you know Ariel Castro. You know, he was a bit of a loner. Never invited us round to a party. I thought, yeah, you bet your sweet arse he was a loner. You know, these rapists and serial killers. They seldom attract the fun crowd. Do you think we, hey, everybody down to Ariel's house for a barbecue? What do you think? They said, strange noises coming from his basement in the middle of the night. What, what was that about? Um, there we go, royal baby in July. I'm George, they named the baby Prince George. I was nowhere near Kensington Palace last November. I'd like to point that one out. <laughs> what, what, what else was I going to say about them? So I sent my best wishes to... You know, Prince George, Princess Kate, and his uncle William. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I think, I think he's really good, involved at some point along. So, yeah, looking forward to this next year. What's, what's been happening? Um, well, uh, oh God, I do have, I do have some things I, I think we're going to forecast for this year. Um, you know, prostate examinations, always a good one. You know, boys, have your prostate examined. Uh, you might have guessed from the accent that I went to Eton. Uh, that's not a joke, okay? It's obviously like classes. But anyway, we're always accusing one another of being queer there. People say, Callahan, you know, is wiping your ass, is that an erotic experience for you? And then I was going, oh, oh, oh. It's indubitably good and erotic, don't you find? Boys, is your walnut not a bit frolicsome? Doesn't want to come out to play? A few guilty smiles there. You know, but oh, what is it about it makes you both look and sound Japanese? That's what I wanted to know. What you're allowed to laugh is kind of a demographic question. But um, well, maybe I'll skip the one about when I went to the doctor about that. But I, I do, I do have some, um, I do have some really worthwhile material. Uh, up to now, it's been unutterably shite. Yeah, I was the most famous Irish comedian in Afghanistan, where I spent a while. And um, the thing about Afghanistan is it's pretty dangerous, as you'll know. It's almost as dangerous as being a black man taking a taxi through Tottenham. You know, you've obviously not really read the newspapers, okay, topical joke, that fell flat. But we had Christmas not long ago. I'm quite mature, as you can tell, you know. I got that life stage where I split up with the mother of my child. What did I get her for Christmas? A massive carton of cigarettes. It was the only way I can kill her and get away with it, you know? A few of you maybe do the same. So, um, I, I, I used to be a teacher, but I decided it was time for a career change, you know? With the help of my psychiatrist and the police. <laughs> when you start fantasizing about doing a Dunblane and the little cunts, it, it might be time for a rethink. Um, so, I went into medicine, you know, studying medicine, there was this girl, Helen, my class, such a fucking goody two-shoes, you know, actually wanted to save people. We all wanted to just fill forms and, you know, always getting top mark in the test. I thought, I'll get you back, you bitch. So, um, there we were, um, dissecting a cadaver, you know. I was dissecting a man, I called him Beyonce. It was a way of coping with it. And I thought, <laughs> I'll get you back, you know, Helen, the, the goody two-shoes. So, um, I nicked his dick, as you do. What? All medical students have done it. And so there she is at, at the bus stop, you know, fishing around in a purse, she's finding the exact change. She's never an oyster card. And what does she pull out? She pulls out the bloke's dick. The only time she ever touched one. Anyway, she's coming out of therapy about now. Um, but uh, does it get worse? What was I going to say? So, uh, you know, medicine, I was a bit troubled about that. And then I told the university, I'm, go I'm going to change my name by Deep Pole. And they said, so what is it? We had to put in the certificates. I said, could it be Harold Shipman? 
but for some reason they didn't think that would go that would be quite right so another an, another uh, rethink um, anyway, ah, oh god. Well, we've got to wind up pretty soon, but the thing is, you're going home on the tube. It's always so packed on the tube, isn't it? Now, the way to get a seat at rush hour is this. I always have a big rucksack on, with the wires coming out. Have your mobile phone out, finger poised over the mo mobile phone, close your eyes and shout, Allah Akbar! Always fucking clears the carriage. Okay, look me up on Facebook. I'm George William Callahan. Good night. God. Everybody, rather, um, please keep it going for Alex Page.